Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. Today's video is going to be absolutely bonkers. Now, the data is in and I was wrong, you guys, and I am sorry. Now, here's the good news. I was wrong about something that I believe to be a toxic narrative. So the good news is, is the big picture, you guys, I have been right, but today's video is about accountability. And even though that I believe the data set that I was mentioning is not relevant to what's going on today, I still wanna hold myself accountable. And that's what this video is gonna be about today. And what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna start the video by explaining to you guys what happened, what data set did I get wrong? And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compare median sales price for 2022 to median sales price to right now, because I really believe it's important to understand those narratives because 2022 median sales price overall is not a great indication on the trajectory of the housing market. Now further, I'm going to do the best job I can at remaining objective. And we're going to talk about what we need to see for a housing market crash not to happen. So I'm going to try to stay objective, plays devil's advocate here and, you know, really take a look at, is it even possible for us not to go into a crash? So I'm going to do a lot of comparing guys. And I really want you guys to stay tuned to that part of the video, but also staying on the line of accountability. I'm also going to talk to you guys about the three main things that I have been wrong about. And you guys know that I've been doing these videos since around March of 2022. And you also know that the entire time I've been doing these videos, I have told you that my personal goal is to purchase a home in February of 2023. And I plan on continuing to take you through that journey. Now, also the specificity, you guys, of what I'm saying, it's very, very important, which again is why accountability videos. But regardless, we're going to take a look at all of those things and really dig into what's going to happen in 2023. Is the housing market crash canceled? Is it not canceled? Who can we believe? And that's the video that we're making today. And if you guys can remember, please, I'm not a financial advisor, even though my bio is as a realtor, loan officer, and instructor in all things real estate. And I'm still an emotional human being. I'm sorry about that part, but please guys, for my emotional human beingness, for my realness, I wear my heart on my shoulder. I forgot to check my emotions at the door. I'm sorry, please guys like this video for me, subscribe if you haven't already, and shoot me a comment below. Either way, guys, let's get started. We're going to start by talking about what happened recently that caused me to even make this video and apologize to you guys. And basically what happened, guys, is a whole bunch, a whole bunch of fanboys and trolls started attacking me. And I'm used to it, but there was like a high level of attack recently. They're attacking me, you know, my character because I had a foreclosure, because I had a bankruptcy, that I'm an idiot, that I'm stupid. And to anyone that read those comments and got discouraged, here's what I want to tell you guys. Despite what these people are saying and all of the belittling that we're hearing, you do not need to live a perfect life to be successful in real estate. As human beings, as determined human beings, we can overcome any challenge. And that, you guys, is the premise of my channel. Anyone that's ever had a channel, bad credit, bankruptcy, foreclosure, whatever it is, I want to be that beacon of light that tells you if I can do it, so can you. But regardless, you guys, all of those trolls got me a little bit of emotional. All right. And my video I put out yesterday, I forgot to check my emotions at the door. Now I'm not going to use any names here. I don't want to bash anyone. And I apologize for that as well. The video that I made yesterday, I played a video of an investor that I don't agree with his narrative and that's all right. But I played a video on that video. This man was talking about 2022 for the entire year. 2022 median sales. And I was wrong about that. I was talking about what the median sales price is right now. When we end the year, I forgot to mention that basically anyone that's pushing the narrative that the housing market's not going to crash gets to reverse the space time continuum and basically gets to pick out another median sales price. And the median sales price for 2022 is actually where it was at around August of 2022. So I usually don't look at that information, you guys, because it's not relevant, in my opinion, to what's going on right now. It's not a leading indicator. It's very difficult to get an idea of what's happening right now when they're using data that makes it appear that we're in a better situation. I'm going to show you guys the 2022 median sales price, and then I'm going to show you guys what the median sales price is actually at right now so that we can understand you know what narrative to believe 
what data set to review. What I'm gonna do to really dig into median sales price for 2022 compared to median sales price currently, we'll jump into the National Association of Realtors data. Really what I wanna do here, guys, is paint the picture of the narrative people are creating because again, they essentially get to rewind the space-time continuum to further push their narrative that everything's okay. And when the reality is in this market, you do not need to be throwing caution to the wind. You need to be super duper careful. So the end of December median sales price was $366,900. As you can see here, that's right now. That is the most recent data on that form. And it's also indicating that we are, you know, realistically comparing December to December of last year, we're up only 2.3%. Again, this is according to the National Association of Realtors. Redfin has different numbers as to Zillow, CoreLogic, and so forth. But I wanted to stick here. This was the information that was being used. Again, unfortunately, the link wasn't there, but I found it and I'm apologizing now. So it's probably the same right now, being that we're in the third week of January, but it clearly says we ended the year in December at 366,900 at 2.3% year over year growth. Now, I believe that this is the most important data set to look at right here because this is telling us the current trajectory and trends of the housing market. And that's outside of normal seasonal trends. So I want to look at the most recent relevant data and basically temperature check the housing market as often as possible. And we can't really do that using Case Shiller or using information that doesn't tell us what's happening right now. So instead of talking about the current median sales price is actually about 366,900 and only 2.3% year over year growth, People push this narrative right here instead. Problem with using this narrative is it allows us to pick a middle number between January and December. So when people say this, guys, they're implying that nothing's wrong, we only live once, and just send it. When the reality is we're $20,000 under that and we're only at 2% growth versus 10% growth. So this number up here, y'all, is extremely misleading because according to this, median sales price in 2022 is 386,000 and we ended with 10% year over year growth. And they get that because they did the same thing here in 2021. So they're comparing median from 2021 to median of 2022. Again, the problem with that is, is you can't do that when the trends are reversed, quantitative tightening, the housing market's crashing. That is an outdated, in just my opinion, that is an outdated and ineffective way to temperature check the market. Because again, it's not telling us where we're at right now, which is 366,900 with only a 2% year over year price increase. And that's on a national average. So although I was wrong and I apologize for that guys, but I'm not wrong about the points that I was making and the toxic narrative people are pushing. The thing is guys, is a lot of these people are so heavily invested in real estate. They have to think of all of the ways it's not going to crash. The problem with doing that is, is there's a lot of people that listen to these guys and don't do their own research and assume that, oh, home prices are up 10% year over year. So we got to YOLO and freak out and go buy a house before before demand comes back and we miss out on our opportunity when the reality is is we will probably have buying opportunities over the next three years the reality is is for most people the longer that we wait right now the better deal that we can get and i have proven that in my opinion anyways by comparing where we were at to peak in june compared to where we are at right now here's the article that came up almost immediately after i sent that video out so i was like no what a gut chuck ow you know what a gut hit ouch i gotta stop getting emotional these trolls say some awful things man and i know that these content creators are sending their legion of fanboys to attack me my you know me personally you know you rent you're stupid travis you got a foreclosure a bank bankruptcy, you can never be successful. I mean, you guys, let's stay in the solution and help me stay out of my feelings. I'm really sorry about that. All right. So when we scroll down here and there's four points that I really want to go over with you guys so that we can heat check the housing market and really look at relevant data on what's happening right 
now, right? Not using our feelings, not using our emotions. Here's the data, here's the links, okay? And then after we go through this section, I'm gonna play devil's advocate and I'm gonna talk about how we don't go into a housing market crash. Now, the first thing is, is home sales. In San Jose, pending sales rose 21% month over month on a seasonally adjusted basis, more than any other metro. Next came Anaheim, Richmond, Albany, and Chicago on a year over year. Only one metro saw an increase in pending sales, San Francisco. The biggest decliners were Boise at 77% decline. Baton Rouge at 65% decline. New Orleans at 52% decline. I need you guys to understand the housing market crash is happening in some metro areas. If you don't see that in your metro area, also understand it will take time, unfortunately, to hit your metro area. But you guys, we have the trends on our side now and understand it's going to spread. Let's keep reading. Prices, median sales price fell from a year earlier, okay, in 26 metro area 26 metro area san francisco year over year decline negative 11 percent plus add where they were at at peak san francisco y'all is crashing from a price perspective next san jose down 7.6 percent memphis honolulu's back on the board detroit all right but take a look at this you guys again it's not in every metro area. look at this the biggest increases were in greensboro el paso rochester Omaha Nash and Nashville. But what this is not telling you is this is not telling you how much those metro areas are down from peak. And that's why I keep saying we got to be really careful on whose narratives to buy into. We have the data, you guys. Unfortunately, it's not in every metro area. Let's go on to listings. New listings fell for the most from a year earlier in Boise, 57%, Greensboro, 52%, Tacoma, 48%, Seattle, 48%, Stockton, 47%, McAllen, 35%, Detroit, Albany, Newport, and Rochester. Now let's look at supply. Active listings rose the most from a year earlier in Northport, 79%, Seattle, 59%, Nashville, 56%, Tampa 55, Fort Worth 48, and they fell the most in Greensboro, Milwaukee, Hartford, Brigport, and New Haven. And again, these are year over year comparisons, and I believe this is using actual unit numbers, which according to Fred Economic Data, y'all, is actually more than that. And when we look at months of supply, it's even more of that. But here's the four bullet points that this article is going over. Now what I wanna do is I wanna stay objective, and let's think about what it's gonna take for the housing market not to crash in 2023. Now, first, in order to do that, let me pull up the chart from Redfin median sales value just to show you what happened last year and what's happening right now this year. And then let's talk about what will need to happen in order for us to not crash. Okay, so here's where I wanna start right here. And I want you guys to pay attention to this, okay? The blue line is where we're at right now. This is median sales price according to Redfin. The black line is last year, 2022. I want to once again remind you what happened, you know, at the end of February, roughly last year, which was this massive increase in prices, median sales price. And honestly, guys, there are flaws in using median sales price, but this is the data that we have and this is what we're using. But what we're basically saying is, is in order for this blue line not to have year over year price decline, which means this blue line right here cannot go under the black line. Okay, so the blue line cannot go under this black line. And look, it's starting plateaued. So in other words, what this means is, is we will have to have a run up in our housing market starting in February. And if this blue line start to, you know, starts to run up in February, all right, we don't have a housing market crash yet. It's going to make things much worse. Inflation is going to get out of control again, and we're going to probably go into depression. But you also have to put this in perspective. What you would be saying is, is that we're going to have an even bigger fear of missing out problem, an even bigger appraisal gap problem, overbidding, waiving contingencies, settling on a house that you don't want, that will have to be worse this year in order to keep up with what happened in 2022. And let me ask you guys, do you really think, do you guys really believe that in 2023, the fear of missing out from buyers will be worse than last year? That is the only way that I can see that blue line staying above that black line. We, we have to have even more fear of missing out. And here's the thing, you guys, here's the reason why we need even more, because people have less savings. We have historically low savings. People have historically high consumer debt. Things are way more unaffordable than they were 
in 2022. Let me show you. Look at how much more houses are at the start of this year versus the start of 2022. So we're saying that the fear of missing out is going to be so great that the much higher mortgage rates don't even matter. Y'all see my point? And I don't believe for a second that that's true. But look at this. So here's where we're at right here. I have an average mortgage payment of $2,263. You guys, that's a fact. All right, where we started the year last year was under about $1,700. So it's over, it's almost $600 more per month to purchase a house right now. So things are still super duper unaffordable, but that's okay, you guys. I wanna be the devil's advocate, all right? Some type of black swan event will have to happen that triggers all of these buyers' emotions that makes them flood back into the market and causes overwhelming fear of missing out. And that's gonna be extremely difficult to happen. Can it happen? Yes, but it's gonna be extremely difficult, not only because of the lowered savings, not only because of the overwhelming credit card debt, but also you guys, we have doubled the interest rates. Interest rates are double right now, almost double right now than they were this time last year. But not only that, inventory is also basically double than we were at last year. Months of supply is definitely double than we were at last year. So we have higher unaffordability, higher interest rates, more inventory. And yet we're going to have an even worse fear of missing out. So I don't know. Some type of black swan event would have to happen such as this, right? Thinking outside of the box. Maybe the government pass, somehow passes some magical incentives for any home buyers on the sideline and gives us tax breaks and free down payments and things of that nature. And I can see that that black swan event leading people back into the market and basically disregarding unaffordability. The thing is, I think that's going to be extremely difficult to get to happen. So again, unless we start seeing overwhelming bidding wars, appraisal gaps, waiving contingencies in the face of much higher mortgage payments, much higher interest rates, double the inventory, then I don't know how we're not going to have a housing market crash. And the thing that makes it hard to not have a housing market crash is equity went up 30 to 40% in about two years, making it making home ownership out of reach for so many people. So staying in the line of accountability and transparency, there have been basically three main things that I've been wrong about. And you guys know, you know, there's no crystal ball. I'm guessing what the Federal Reserve is going to do and what impact that's going to have on the market. So it's really hard. But the one thing that I've been really wrong about when I first started doing these videos is the foreclosure rate. I expected the, for the foreclosure rate to actually start going up. Now, during my investigation of that, because I stayed investigating, I made a claim and I stayed monitoring it. And I found that I was actually wrong. I believe right now it's now going to start going up. Last year, we were coming out of the foreclosure ban. We still had massive amounts of equity increase and people could just sell their house. But here's what I learned by being wrong how effective loan modification is. So I believe as a result of all the things I listed, plus how effective loan modification appears to be, that's why we're not sitting at a high, an increase in foreclosures. But guess what, you guys? The data just came out and the default rate is up. 1.85 million people right now are behind on their mortgage, not to mention what's happening in Florida. The default rate in Florida right now is surging primarily as a result of Hurricane Ian, but also unaffordability. So there is a lot of things happening right now that we're going to stay on top of as we go into 2023. But I was wrong about the foreclosure trajectory in 2022. Another thing I was wrong about you guys, and this one still blows my mind, is the unemployment rate. I thought at the beginning of the year, the unemployment rate would be higher. The, the, the crazy thing is, is lower. Listen, you guys, quantitative tightening. Since quantitative tightening, the unemployment rate got lower. Now, the thing is, is the unemployment rate is tainted. They're counting one person multiple times. So it's a very flawed, in my opinion. And probably what's happening is, is as a result of the unaffordability, more people are getting a second job just to stay afloat. And that's probably what we're seeing there. But what a shocking, shocking thing we're witnessing, guys. So the higher that unemployment rate, it's going to wreck things. I mean, we're seeing so many layoffs, Google, Facebook, Microsoft. I mean, there's so many layoffs, but it has not shown in the unemployment rate. In fact, all, even though we're seeing all this job loss, the unemployment rate is going down. 
So I'm suspicious of that, but I was wrong about those numbers. And you guys, I'm sorry, I wanted to be accountable. Now, the last thing that I was wrong about was calling the actual unit amount of active listings. I was hoping that we were gonna get by the end of 2022, and it was a bold claim, but I was hoping to get to pre-pandemic levels of inventory. And you guys, we didn't hit that number. We ended about a little less than 700,000. I think it was like 688 active units. Now, more specifically, I was close with months of supply, which is a better indicator of inventory, at least on the short term, because it takes into account demand. Now, as far as months of supply, you guys, we actually almost hit this year, 2022, we almost hit pre-pandemic levels of months of supply. We didn't hit it, but we almost hit it. So you guys, I was wrong about that as well. That's what you do. You hypothesize and you keep tracking the data. As the data comes in, you adjust and you adapt so you can become even stronger in the market. In other words, just keep doing the research and tracking what's going on with you, your life, and in your market. But overall, you guys, in my opinion, the housing market is absolutely still a falling knife. And for the life of me, for the life of me, I can't understand outside of being unethical, outside of being unethical, I can't understand why people push these narratives like everything is fine. I don't get it, you guys. Now, here's the thing. I've had a handful of, of my subs say, you know, uh, debate this other person, talk to this other person. And you guys already know, I love doing collaborations and talking to people, especially if they don't have if they don't have the same opinion as me. You guys see me on my comment section all the time talking to people that have a difference of opinion as me. I enjoy it. It keeps me sharper. It keeps my subscribers sharper. Here's the problem. The last time I brought an investor specifically, and I'm not going to use their names, uh, an investor on my channel to talk about the housing market, he greatly offended by the way he was talking of uh, many of my subscribers. I got so many emails telling me if I ever bring that person back on my channel that they're not going to subscribe. So in the faith of unity, in the faith of breaking down walls and growing together, I will reach out to do an interview with this person, but my condition is this, this person. And if you guys don't know who I'm talking about, good, you're not going to miss anything. If this person makes a video and he apologizes to anyone that's ever had a foreclosure, a bankruptcy, any of those things, if he goes on and he says, sorry for the way that he has been belittling those people over the last two years, then I will do a poll on my channel and I will ask my subscribers do you want me to do an interview with this individual? And I'm not going to name names here, but before I do that, I am not going to sacrifice all of my core subscribers and fans and all of the people that have literally been following what I'm saying and they understand what I'm saying. I'm not going to sacrifice their feelings and their concerns just to appease a small amount of people. But again, in the fairness of accountability, if this man apologizes to all of the people he bullies and belittles and, and just keeps down in the ground, you had a foreclosure, you're renting, you're stupid, you're a fool, you can't be smart. In order to be successful, you have to be perfect. If he apologizes and says, I didn't mean that, that's not the impression I gave. Uh, if I came across that way, I'm sorry, it wasn't my intention, just something. If he does something in that regard, then yes. I would absolutely love it. But again, you guys, I have to be super careful because remember, most people that are watching my channel have struggles. Most people are not perfect. Most people are renters. Most people are confused. Most people just want help. And that's where I'm going to stay. But again, in all fairness, I will reach out if he does those things. Now, I really didn't want to make this video, you guys. Who wants to point the finger at themselves, especially because I got triggered off some trolls and especially because the data I'm talking about that I was wrong about is not even relevant. It's not even relevant. It's just a toxic narrative people are pushing and they can because we just ended 2022. They get to rewind the clock and push their narrative a little more. It is what it is, you guys. Nevertheless, I still want to be accountable if I get things wrong. So I'm sorry about that. And other than that, I really hope you guys got some value, insights, and perspective. And if you're out there investing in real estate, you know I wish you luck. And I hope you win.